Pussies and welcome to oh. another video. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm here with Manny. Sad dudes. Sad dude. Right, we started on a really bad. Oh my god, I should have started it with a creepy voice. Hey YouTube. Hello Popsies and welcome to another video. I am not as good as Shane Dawson. Anyway, um, as you can tell, this is going to be inspired by Shane Dawson, and this is going to be creepy stories of our past. And I am here with Manny because of he is one of the only friends that believe me when I say my house is fucking haunted. It's haunted. I've, I'm a witness. <laughs> yes, you are. Anyway, so we're going to start with one of my stories, and the first story I'm going to start with is my grandmother. Right, so my grandmother died a year before I was born, so keep that in mind. I, I had no references of her, I had no idea what she looked like, and around my 10th birthday, or 8th birthday, I can't remember exactly, um, I, like, woke up in the middle of the night, I sat up, and I just looked around, and I saw this, like, the silhouette of a person just sitting at the end of mine and my mum's bed because I shared a room with my mum and I shared a bed with my mum which is kind of embarrassing now that I think about it I was eight or ten huh that's yeah anyway so there was just this woman at the end of my bed and um, my grandmother wasn't English so she didn't know how to speak English she didn't know the language so she wasn't talking, she was just sort of sitting there, looking. And I had no idea who this woman was, but I didn't feel, like, afraid. I was more calm than anything around this woman. And then, like, she just sort of looked at my mother, looked at me, and then, like, put her finger to her lips, like, shh. And so, after that, I just laid down and I nuzzled close to my mother... I, I must, I don't know how I didn't think anything of a woman being in my house, but I just didn't. I just nuzzled close to my mother and I went back to sleep. And then in the morning, I went up to my mum and I said, Mum, who was that woman? And my mum got really confused and really quite worried. And she said, what were a woman? And I described the woman at the end of my bed and my mum just sort of went... You're describing someone I know, and I was like, wait, what? So she then proceeded to bring out a photo of, like, these... There was, like, a big table, and there was a bunch of people sitting around it. And I pointed to one of them, and I said, that's her. And my mum just sort of froze up and said, that's my mother. And so, yeah, I believe that the woman I saw was my grandmother. And, yeah, that's all that's to it, to that story. I just remember seeing that old woman at the end of my bed. So, yeah, Manny, mm. your turn to tell a ghost story. Well, that was a very interesting story. You know, the one that was quite interesting involved your mother in it, and how you freaked her out. My mother was... Yeah. My mum believes that my nan is actually her guardian angel and going to protect her. So, like, when I mm. told my mother, she wasn't really scared. Well, she was that's more uh, confused. Nice way of thinking of it. All right, so, okay. Uh, just bear with me with my story. Uh, some bits may come across as confusing or, like, um, really long. But uh, I'm going to try and keep it short and simple, and then I'll explain iron out the details as I go along. So basically, uh, first of all, I'm going to point out that uh, I am not a religious person. I don't believe any anything about God or anything like that. I was brought up Muslim uh, when I was born. And uh, in Islam, there's no... We don't believe in ghosts, but we do believe in evil spirits called demons, like the jinn, stuff like that. But those kind of spirits are something that um, we believe that can never cross to our world. And that's why ghosts and spirits in the Islamic world doesn't exist to us. But they exist in a different world. So I'm just 
you know, um, pointing that out. I don't believe in any kind of um, religion or anything. I don't belong to any religion. But I'm not skeptical of ghosts and demons purely because of the experience that I had when I was a child. So here's how the story goes. I was <clears throat> probably around the ages to six or eight. Uh, I was alone at home with uh, my grandmother and my family were out visiting relatives. My sisters were in school. So um, at, this, at the time, my grandmother was very sick. She was very sick. Uh, she was saying like all sorts of things. She says she see things a lot. And basically her sickness, uh, she had like an organ failure and she was on very strong medication. So she'd said a lot of things uh, while she was uh, bedridden for days. And um, this one particular day, she was moaning louder than she normally does because she's constantly in pain, uh, her sickness, uh, her whole body was in pain. But this was like, this uh, to me as a curious child sounded more of a crying pain, uh, like, she was scared of something. Um, so I entered the room. Basically, I was next. Uh, I was in the room next door watching cartoons, um, watching Bambi, believe it or not, because uh, I was that old. Um, and uh, I walked into the room, and my grandmother has her eyes closed. Uh, she was shouting in. Uh, she was shouting in. Arabic, uh, go away, go away. And uh, at the time, uh, I didn't understand a lot of Arabic. I just, uh, I asked my mum what the word meant. Uh, and she said, it means go away. I asked her that because uh, I'd, I was wondering what she was showing at the time. But that was like after everything happened. So basically back to it. Uh, I looked at the cupboard across from her bed and uh, I just see a, a black figure a dark figure it was like um, half human half a monkey dog thing like I couldn't make out any features because it was a very black dark figure and it was sitting on top of a the cupboard like it was some sort of animal and it was just staring at my grandmother and I didn't proceed to investigate what it was. I looked away from it, and when I looked back, it was gone. And my grandmother continued to um, moan and all the things that she did that day. Uh, the next day, uh, unfortunately, she passed away. And uh, the day she passed away, I remembered what happened the day before. Uh, and I believed to this day whatever that was killed her that caused her so much pain obviously she was extremely terminally ill but we weren't expecting her to expire so so quickly uh, so it was all of us her death was all of a sudden you know even though she was extremely ill um, yeah we just couldn't figure it out and so um, I asked I told my mother uh, what her last words were uh, well what I last heard from her when I was in that room with her I never told this to my fully explained to my parents at the time I told them like later on uh, years later what happened that day and um, because to me it felt like a dream but I remember it as if it actually happened so it kind of doesn't feel like a dream like memories you have as a child that feel like a dream that didn't happen but you're sure that did happen it was one of those kind of feelings so I didn't know if I could believe that it actually happened but I have a feeling in my gut that I wasn't dreaming and I probably may or wasn't seeing things but I definitely saw something and, uh, and to this day I believe that whatever it was uh, probably scared my because I, I couldn't tell that she saw uh, she could see it as well I wasn't the only one seeing it and it was the reason why she was screaming so much because she saw this thing 
and um, yeah, it was just so weird that uh, that I possibly saw the same thing as her, and I would never know, to be honest, if she saw it as well, because she's unfortunately passed. So yeah, that's my story. Okay, so back to me, I guess. Uh, this one's going to be short, but it's just what I remember. So, Manny can vouch for this. My bedroom is quite big. There's a two-person bedroom, a king-size bed, and then there's a normal bed. That's my bed. One bed's for my mother, one bed's for me. I was lying on my mother's bed, on the end of it, facing the door, and the door was wide open. Like, there was no... Nothing, like, closed the door or anything. It was wide open. Something was blocking it from closing. And I did that on purpose because I didn't like leaving my room closed because I hate my room. Anyway, so I was lying there and then my brother from downstairs called me and I was like, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. I looked up to the door and I just saw this face, like, literally... My door is right next to the stairs, so it was, like, over the overhang, looking into my room with a wide smile and really wide eyes. And at the time, I thought it was just my brother pulling a prank on me and being creepy. <coughs> so I literally just was like, what are you doing? And as I blinked, it went away, and I was like, what the fuck? So I got up, I went to the stairs fast to see w if he was running down it, and the person was gone. This person looked, it was a male, and it looked very similar to my brother, but it was different. So I went downstairs, and I went to Nani, and I said, what were you doing? And he said, what are you talking about? And then mum was like what are you talking about star and i was like he was just upstairs trying to scare me and he, and then mum was like no he's been on the computer since you were last down here so we have i have no idea what the fuck that was and it creeps me out and now i have the door closed all the time because i don't want to see anything like that ever again it was so <laughs> creepy Anyway, do you have a short story? Um, I, I have one. Uh, this is not my personal experience. This is a story from a, f a friend that told me that she had an experience with when she was younger. Mm. And it didn't uh, happen to her as much, but to her cousin. So, um, this is basically, a story of a story of a story. Basically, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I'm going to assume that you're all familiar with the Ouija board. Yes, Ouija boards. Yeah, so um, her cousin uh, owned one. And uh, one day when they were having sleepover, <laughs> how cliche of them to actually play with them. Quite a classic tale to set up a horror story. So basically, um, they were playing with the Ouija board and, uh, well, to their knowledge, nothing really happened, um, but her cousin had claimed that she felt a presence of someone in the house. Um, so if you guys don't know any rules about the Ouija board, to properly close a Ouija board is to say goodbye. Yeah. If you don't say goodbye, then you've invited whatever demon spirit into your home. Um, so yeah, this wasn't in my best friend's home, but it was in her at her cousin's, and there were like three of them just like playing around, uh, <clears throat> testing out the Ouija board and stuff like that. And probably uh, after a few days, um, they were sensing strange things. Um, her cousin claimed that she'd seen shit in the mirror. Uh, she was too scared to go to bed by herself without. Um, you know, checking, like, every corner of the house. And uh, she hears stuff in the middle of the night, basically. Shit like that, all the, you know, usual stuff, noises. Yeah. Um, she hadn't seen any apparitions, but she felt, like, a presence. Like, she didn't feel... She, like, she had this feeling that she never had normally when she's living at home. 
And um, I don't know if she, she's not religious either, but her parents are very religious. And she said it's quite weird for uh, any like weird paranormal shit to happen in a religious household. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I can say really about that story. Okay, well, back to me then. I have one story which is kind of my mum's story, or I can do Elias's story, or I can do a video with Elias on this. He probably has some ghost stories. I'll do oh. one with Elias later on. Anyway, um, so I, my mother stays up very late into the night sometimes, and she just watches TV, she watches her shows, she chills out, just being normal. One night, she was heading to bed, she had just turned off the TV, and you know the reflection in the TV when it's black? Mm -hmm. In that reflection, she saw someone going out the back door. So oh. she was freaked out. She went to check and no one was there. The back door was locked. So no one could have gotten in or out. So she basically, the next day I just sort of like randomly bring up because I had been remembering my ghost stories. And I go to my mum and I'm like, mum, I think this house is haunted because I say that to everyone. <laughs> and she was like, um... I don't believe in ghosts, but I have seen weird things here, and I'm like, like what? And she said, well, actually, a couple of nights ago, I saw someone going through that door. So, obviously, I was freaked out, because I thought I was just crazy. <laughs> um, so then, later on, me and my mum were in the car. Like, this was, like, recently, like, a few months back. We were in the car, and I brought it up again, and I said... Um, you remember you saw that guy? And she was like, yeah. And I said, well, what if he was an old owner of the house? And then my mum tells me, well, there was an old owner here who actually committed suicide. And I I, I don't know any more than that. My mum just mm. told me that... Well, religion would tell you that uh, suicide victims don't go to heaven or hell. They um, stay. Yeah. Apparently... Um, Which is what I... Apparently, he was a very young guy, like, around Nani's age, which would make sense, because I saw that face. But, like, mm. he was also, yeah. like, he committed suicide because of a lot of things happened, and Mum doesn't know much about it, but she knows that she, when they bought the house, and Dad's even vouched for this as well, um, the person they were selling, who was selling it, did have to bring up that someone had died in this house. Damn. So, do you live in a rural, like, uh, like uh, area with, um, where there's no like lots of houses? I I live in a town that is quite small, and there's not that many houses, and there's a lot of woods. Uh, like this place is completely covered by woods and areas to like hide and shit. Mm. I have some ghost stories of the woods as well. I, yeah, like where I live now, ghosts aren't very common because um, I live near the city. So I live in an area where there's, the houses are all like next to each other, built next to each other. So mm. like very close to neighbors, stuff like that. So you always you hear wanna, something during the night. Do you want to talk about Penelope and I'll talk about Sally afterwards? Okay. So, um... This goes back to my childhood right now. Um, I've always had a lingering spirit with me. Um, she, I call her Penelope because I've, I've seen her in, in a like a dress and she's always followed me. Um, she kind of reminds me of, from the way Manny's described it, I, I remember her as the woman from Insidious that takes over the guy. Like, let's, that's how I see her in my head. Oh, right. Hmm. Uh, I haven't actually properly seen Insidious, but, uh... It's crazy. It's good. Yeah. Uh, she's followed me around since I was, like, probably I could remember around, like, ten or eight. Um... Like, she hasn't done any, like, uh 
drastic uh, activities. She's always just been the lingering type, like like a guardian angel. Something, someone just watches over me. But the creepy thing about her, for me personally, um, like Manny's told me that she's come to visit me, and I felt weird things like some nights just like someone else is around and that's creepy to me like this is not just manny's imaginary friend i i believe penelope is real like a real ghost spirit thing yeah it, it's creepy i don't i i honestly like no offense to penelope and i really hope she doesn't hear me but she really creeps me out it's probably because um she doesn't say a lot of things. Anyway. Um, so, Manny has an imaginary friend called Penelope. I have an imaginary friend called Sally. Uh, Sally came around when I was very young. And I had just lost all of my friends in school. And I was just really lonely. So one day, I just thought I felt someone. Like, around me. And ever since then, I've just brought up this girl called Sally. And I've drew her. I have pictures from when I was younger where I drew her. I used to go into the kitchen holding someone's hand and said to my mum, Mum, look, Sally's here. And, like, um, it was just odd to me that I could sense someone at a very young age. And even now I can sense her. And sometimes I can see her as well. Just like for glimpses, I just feel her presence. I look up to where I think I see her. She's there for a split second, then she disappears. And then there's like, one time I remember I had a dream. Um, like when Sally came around, I had this dream of a, like a little girl and she was very scared and shaking and crying. And she looked like she had be been beaten a lot. And I just put my hand out to help her up and she grabbed it and then she just tugged me down into water and then I woke up. And I have no idea what that means, but I believe that little girl who was shaking and crying and everything, I believe that was Sally and I believe that she was abused when she was alive. That That's all I know about her. Mm. People are going to think we're insane. Yeah. Uh, um, I've got one more story. One more story? Um, I think we have time for one more story. This is a story I heard from the internet, and I find it really interesting. Oh, God. Uh, but it's basically about um, these two brothers that went to a um, hotel resort with their family when they were really young. And uh, basically... Uh, it was the type of resort that had, like, just a lot of adults around and mm. uh, there was no other kids around for them to play with and stuff like that. They uh, One day he was um, walking at, around the uh, swimming pool area of the resort and uh, he looked up and he saw a girl in the window and he smiled at the girl and he waved hi to her, but she just kept staring at him. And he, uh, and he just, like, moved on and kept on walking, minding his own business. And um, the next day, he was at the sitting on the swing of the resort. And he saw the, saw the girl um, standing uh, probably around, like, 20 meters away from him against the outline of the woods that was nearby the resort. Mm. And uh, he got out the swing... And he went over to check on her, to see her, to say hi. And um, as he got closer, she turned around and sprinted into the woods. Um, and he decided not to follow. And uh, on the last day, as they were leaving the resort, and when, when they left and they were driving down the road, he saw her on the side of the road and, uh, like, looked at her. And as they drove past, he looked back at the window at her and he told his parents in the car asked them did you see that his mom looked behind and said see what oh. and then they, they couldn't see him only he could 
Yeah. And the funniest part of the story is when, when he said, um, uh, what if I, like, I wish I could have, like, followed her into the woods. Maybe I could have gone late or something. But I was, like, my teen uh, mind thinking of that. Well, like, I'll do one more story as well to balance it off then. And this one will be Elias's story because maybe oh. I should keep that. I don't know. We'll do that one later in mine and Elias's one. So my last one will be... Let's think about this. I guess I could talk about the little boy that's around my house. Um, basically, I remember a few years back I talked to Manny and Manny was in a call when this happened and I told him I was seeing this little boy around my house. He was like a pale boy, he was in normal clothes and he was just hiding in my house in various places. You remember this, Manny, don't you? Mm-hmm. And I got really scared in one call because I could see him. Yeah, so she was freaking out. He, like, hides under tables and stuff, and he, like, he just follows me around, and it's really creepy. And one day, I had an argument with my father, and the boy appeared in my, like, in, like, this cupboard thing with sliding doors, he appeared in there as I was crying, and he just sort of got got closer to me, and I freaked out and started crying even harder. And he just sort of, like, as he got closer, I got more and more scared. Instead of Sally, that when I felt her presence, I got calmer, this guy got me more scared. And, um... I I still see him like under tables, under chairs. I I sit with my chair and my feet on my chair, cause I don't like the idea of him like grabbing my leg or anything. So I purposely sit with my legs close to me. And um, one day I remember, this is gonna sound so weird. And Manny, you brought this up earlier. I remember one day I was like walking through the hallway of my house. And I just randomly felt someone grab my butt. <laughs> it's so weird. And I like turned around and no one was there. But like, I know I felt it. I know I'm trying exactly. to get that booty. <laughs> and I have no idea what the fuck. Wants a piece did. of it. But like, ever since then, I've been trying to avoid like going places by myself i've avoided like him whenever i see him or sense him i just try to get away from him or i ignore him the best thing to do when he's around is to ignore him he seems like an attention seeker so whenever i look at him and i start freaking out and shaking he likes it so he like gets closer to me to try and get more of a reaction out of me it's really creepy. Also, I nicknamed this guy Steven because I, I didn't know what else to call him. <laughs> um, it's always a Steve. Yeah. Uh, it was just creepy, like, whenever I saw him around the house. And I remember in one call, I had gotten a bit tipsy with Manny and Lai. Mm. And I remember... You can correct me if I'm wrong, but one of you said, like, there was a ghost no. in my house. No, we saw a, um, a platter behind you that was moving. Are you sure? I'm actually freaking out. D did you actually see that? No, no, Lai pointed it out first, and then I said it. I was like, yeah, I saw that as well. I thought you guys were just messing with me. No, we were messing with you when you we said, oh, so there's a shadow behind you. Oh, my but, God. But we didn't want to bring up the plat. I don't think we'd throw out the platter because you were drunk and we didn't want you to freak out even more. Oh, my God. I'm being 100% genuine right now. That's... I'm crying. Guys, if you think this is worse, imagine how she'd react if she was drunk. She gets very emotional. When you guys told me there was a shadow behind me, I turned around and I saw him, like, near the plates, like, just behind me on a chair, and I started freaking out. I hit... Oh my god. Okay, 
We need to end this right now before I have an actual mental breakdown. <laughs> I'm actually crying, you jerk. <laughs> Guys, I, I am being 100% serious right now. Um, this is genuine. I honestly believe my house is haunted and I believe that Manny's seen ghosts as well because I don't see a reason he would lie to me. You can ask a lie as well. If you guys would like to see um, more of these videos, I can do them with lie and some of my other friends that believe mm -hmm. in ghosts and have seen ghosts because I would like to do this because this is one of these things that interests me. And I also read the comments sometimes, so I'm quite curious to know if you guys believe in ghosts or <laughs> I want to hear your stories, actually. Yeah, I if like you believe stories. in ghosts, if you have a ghost story, I would yeah. love to read them. That would be awesome. We love ghost stories, so please share. I love them, but like when I get a, a webcam for YouTube, if I see something move in my background, I'm going to cry. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, tell me if you'd like to see another video of this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. Stay safe in your house. I hope you're not being stalked by a Sally or a Steven or a Penelope. <laughs> hey, Penelope's nice. She grows on you after a while. Penelope's creepy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Penelope. Please don't kill me. Oh, God. Don't make her think she hates you now. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Bye. <laughs>